Hello, and welcome to the Wade Borth Podcast. Today, I have Mike Brevik, my marketing director from CyberDogs. Welcome, Mike. So, Wade, in this big financial world where there's uh, financial advisors, there's uh, money advisors, there's all these different people that, you know, kind of to the layman, they, in some degree, they all kind of do the same thing. What's the difference between kind of the traditional financial advisor versus a wealth strategist like yourself? Well, I think in a in a big scheme of things, everybody plays like a little part of of an of an individual's financial world, and and I see a wealth strategist as kind of the financial quarterback, right? So they're the one that comes in and and um, kind of brings all the pieces together, because you know really at the end of the day, um, it's not always just about money; it's about wealth, and those are two different things. And so wealth is is really that ability to do what you want to do where money allows you to do those certain things. So um, that's probably a big difference. And then it's a strategy about how do we grow wealth so it will allow us to do what we want to do. Um, and, and again, you might have somebody that's managing your money or somebody that's uh, doing another part of your of your finances, but what is your strategy to bring all those together so they can serve you versus you serving your money? So, so if I'm somebody new to this coming right off the street what does that mean to me does that mean that you know that you're investing my money are you somebody who lays out a plan of me to just budget better like what does that look like well i think first off it looks it looks more like trying to help you discover what's important to you what are your financial principles you know everybody wants to talk about goals but i think you have to know who you are and what you want to accomplish before you can lay out a goal or a plan altogether so um in, initially what it looks like is trying to get a good handle on what's important to you and and why um and then laying out that strategy and that might include investments if that falls into what's important to you um, but having a good understanding of what all the positives and, and you know the the pros and cons are of each of each strategy or each um, you know each investment might be is is the first step because most people think there's only one way to go about you know saving for retirement or um, you know financing vehicles or you know getting money for to uh, to invest in real estate or property or, or business but understanding. And having the knowledge behind how to do that is the first step. So a, a strategist is just somebody that's saying, here's a process that you might want to go about doing and kind of bringing all those other um, pieces together under one roof. So you have a good plan or good strategy going forward and not just kind of a piecemeal kind of throw it in the drawer type of thing. Yeah. So you're, so you're basically taking that information, that feedback you're getting from a potential client, um, setting that goal and kind of working it backwards as to how to meet that goal? Is that is that kind of what I'm understanding? Well, partially, but I think more importantly, it's it's saying, here's the money that you have. Um, and a lot of what I'll call financial advisors will say, well, take retirement, for example. They're going to say, you need a million dollars, you need $2 million to retire. Well, what does that mean and what does that do for you? So what typical financial planning does is it it, it sets you up for disappointment or sets you up for failure because you have to meet a certain number by either decreasing your income or saving more, getting a higher rate of return, whatever the current trappings are versus saying, I have a certain amount of dollars today in my pocket. How do I, how am I going to be the most efficient with those dollars? And, and that will lead, and that will tie directly to what your strategy is going forward. And when I say strategy, again, that's your belief system and that's really what you're trying to accomplish throughout your life. And again, that's going to change as we get older. So we have to be nimble to be able to change with that as, as that changes as well. Okay. So somebody who comes to you, it could be all things, but they could be coming to you for, you know, a financial wealth plan from now until they retire or after retirement. It could be all of the above, right? Well, I think it has to really incorporate your, your entire life and, Quite frankly, my my practice is is, is you know your life uh, throughout your life, and really, my focus and my passion is how do we take that intergenerationally, 
how do we take that to the next generation? So everything you work for, you can pass along. You know, you can live and you can live well on the on the dollars you've accumulated and the dollars you've you've used in those assets and then say, well, let me pass the, the dollars along with the knowledge to that next generation and the generation after that. So now we're building a bunch of families that are you know similar to the Rockefellers. You know, they've done it intergenerationally for over a hundred years. Why can't everybody why can't that be available to every person out there where we can take this knowledge and this money and not have everybody start over from from from, from day one. Uh, you know, after you pass away, then the next generation starts over and say, well, now I got to start over and build my own legacy. Why can't we make it a family legacy? Right, right. So if I'm somebody who is wanting to create a family legacy like that, is that, I mean, what's the best time to start? Am I 30 years old, 20 years old, sooner <laughs> the better? What is it? Well, you know, the old adage is when was the best time to plant a tree 30 years ago? When's the second best time today? So it really doesn't matter what age you are. Um, it just do you have the desire to to put yourself forward and say this is this is what I want to do. This is what I want to learn, and this is what I want to pass on to you know for, for myself and for my next generation. Um, I use the example of myself. Um, the things I do financially are beneficial to myself today, but more importantly, what I'm trying to do is set up that legacy so. I'm setting up my son and maybe his kids and grandkids to future generations. Again, not just passing on money, but passing on the knowledge and how to use and keep money. Okay. So as a consumer, if somebody wants to come to you, what do they need to know day one? Do they need to, you know, kind of have their why and kind of their their personal goals figured out prior to coming to you? Is there a process or or even in the comparison of a of a traditional you know, money, money advisor, um, like what, what should I be preparing for? Well, I think the first step is you go out to sagewellstrategy.com, take a look at who we are, what we do and see if, if what our goals and what our beliefs are are in alignment with, with what your goals and beliefs are. And so then, you know, I really think the first step is to knowing what, what your goals and beliefs are, what your, principles are when it comes to money and when it comes to um, what you want to do with your dollars uh, in t today and in, in into the future. I think that's that's really the first step. Second step is, you know, you may not, most people don't come to me with an exact plan. And I don't think that most people I work with will never have an exact plan because life is going to change. We don't know what 10 days, let alone 10 years or 30 years are going to bring. So we just have to say, how can we be most efficient with the dollars we have today? And how, you know, what's our, what's our plan B, plan C, plan D, if things change and things are going to change. I mean, if, if nothing else, if what we're learning today and what's going on in today's environment tells us that life is always going to be changing. And so that we have to be prepared for that. And then how are we being prepared? How are we being prepared to take advantage of opportunities and how are we, uh, preparing to to insulate ourselves from chaos. Okay, so what what's the what's the load on the client then? So if I come to you and become a client, and you know we we go forward with creating a strategy for for myself personally, what do I do after that? Or are you reaching out to me periodically? Do we meet up once <laughs> a month? Like, what does that look like? Well, you know, we can meet up once a month if you're willing to buy me coffee, Mike. I'm always up for that. But, uh, you know, realistically, what we have to do is uh, the, the typical client has to be somebody that wants to be engaged in their own um, in their own future. They have to be more engaged because they have to be more engaged than any one of their advisors because nobody cares more about your future and your financial life than you do, hopefully. So, uh, what, does, so you, what does that mean to be engaged? Well, you have to, um, you know, you know, apply your principles, apply things that you're learning, go out and educate yourself. Those are all key components. Um, where I get, you know, some clients that, you know, they're mad at their advisor, their financial advisor, because their, their stock portfolio went from $500,000 down to $200,000 or $300,000, whatever it was. And they're mad at the advisor. Well, what happened to personal responsibility? Shouldn't you be out there saying, hey, I need to be taking control of that 
Because again, I'm the one that cares more about my money than anybody else cares about it. Yeah. So, so, there, so there's a responsibility on the on the person themselves to maybe be more dedicated to kind of feeding into what that strategy is. Correct. You have you have to be engaged. You have to be educating yourself. I'm here as your guide. I'm here as the the person that's going to take you to the peaks and the valleys. Um, as a guide, but ultimately you're making the final decision. Um, I don't want to take that decision making from you. I think that needs to be made by you because again, you're the one that should be ultimately responsible for your future. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to give advice and be here to be uh, counsel to my clients and to show them a pathway that they can either choose to take or not to take. But again, it ultimately is depends on you to make those decisions and really to educate yourself and to say, yes, I'm ready to move forward. and I'm going to make these changes in my life because I see a, a better path. I want certainty in retirement. I want, um, you know, I want some clarity in my future versus all this, all this noise that's in the financial world right now that gives us nothing but, but static. Yeah. I, I think the hard part for a typical customer is everything you're saying is making sense, but I, I think is, you know, somewhat just normal people who are doing their job every day and just kind of going about life, they don't necessarily know what that means. So to not have been through it, it's kind of difficult to wrap your mind around. So can you give me an example of where, like where you took a client from the beginning into the process and now they're, they're thriving in this? And obviously we don't have to name names, but just an example of maybe somebody who's walked through this before. Yeah, I've had I've had a number of clients who um, were caught up in the trappings of putting their money away, letting somebody else manage it, uh, putting their money at risk in the stock market, thinking that was the only way to grow wealth. Um, and when 2008 came along, um, you know that money pretty much you know, I want to say overnight, but within a short period of time was cut in half or better uh, for what they had. So they went from this position of feeling rather secure to feeling very insecure. And so the emotion there was a lot of fear and anxiety because they didn't have a clue which direction they were headed. And they didn't have a backup plan. So um, uh, this gal lives in Colorado, and we had a, a great conversation, and we started down the pathway of saying, well, let's have you take control of your money. Let's, you know, and she was a person that, you know, read and um, I gave her some, some material to read and she understood it and she got it. Um, and when I talked to her just, just here last week, all the fears that she had back in 2008, she didn't have this time around because now she has dollars that she can take advantage of opportunities. She has a clear picture, clear, kind of a clear pathway of why she's putting her money in places versus just dumping it somewhere. And it really didn't take her a lot of, of time to do it. It took some initial startup in the sense that she had to read some material. She had to engage in some questions, uh, some back and forth, kind of some flush out some ideas that she had. But once she started down that pathway, it's very, um, I don't want to say it's its without any commitment or any pain because anything worthwhile is, you know, involves uh, um, some commitment on your part. But, you know, she went from this position of being fearful and having no control to now being uh, having a lot less fear about the market and the economy and so on and so forth, and now having tremendous control over where her future is going to be. Yeah. So, you know, obviously having some exposure to the brand and working with you for the last few years, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of it I get, and there's still some things I don't quite get. But the part that really stands out when you talk about it is you talk about the control. So, like, what does that mean for people? And I think once they figure out, what that means and the control and the visibility and almost the the kind of the access that they can have by going more the well strategist route it just seems like a no-brainer to me i just don't you know i just question whether or not people are that aware of the differences in what's out there from an advisement standpoint. well it's hard i mean quite frankly you look at it the uh... I, I call it Wall Street, and you know that covers a lot of things. But you look at what the the, the firms on Wall Street in that in that industry have done, and I used to be part of that industry, so I understand it, you know, a little bit. But you look at what they've done. You know, they've created uh, TV channels to promote 
you know how great Wall Street is. I mean, you've got you got Fox Business, you have uh, MSNBC or uh, um, um, CNBC, I should say, that that just promote all the stuff about Wall Street and thinking that's the only place that you can grow and, and, and find wealth. When in all reality, that's that's not the case. There's other places. So there's a lot of noise out there um, that that are distracting people, and they think that they have to go there. And it's about conditioned thinking. You know, I've talked about this with my clients all the time. We have to get beyond the conditioned thinking that somebody is conditioned us to think one way uh, or another. And if we can step back or step away from there, then we're we're ready to say, well, is there a better path? Right. So. Um, when you're looking down, hard at work, doing what you're doing, raising your family, I understand it's difficult. But when you kind of take a step back and say, is, is this the only path, the only way we can go? And you take some time and you work with somebody that's got energy and excitement about finding a different way. Um, I don't think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of commitment or a lot of time that has to be spent to do it. Because if you if you know all that's all that's out there to be known, then you make the right decision. So if you have all the information, you'll make the right decision. The problem is, is that we've been fed just one stream of information. Yeah. It's about education, right? Yep. Self-education and education. Yep. Yep. So as a wealth strategist, is this, you know, um, as somebody off the street learning about this, if they come to you, are you guiding them through this? Are you helping them understand this and actually seeing the opposing side, because like, as, as you and I have talked before, most people go get that job, they fill out the 401k form and they're off to the races and they never give it another thought. So to actually have a conversation with somebody like yourself, where you're kind of educated and, and shown that like, Hey, there are other options. I think that's going to be super foreign to people, but at the same time, you know, I don't know that it's something they're going to pursue without somebody like yourself helping them. Right. <clears throat> well, you know, there, there's all the knowledge people need are within themselves. I'm a firm believer that everything you need to know is within you. Uh, my job is just to help start peeling back the layers of that onion. And once that starts to happen, it happens almost organically on itself. Because now you're going to see that, hey, there is a different way. So you start questioning things in a lot different process or a lot different way. So my job is just really get you get the ball rolling, getting it started, and then having that conversation with me on a regular basis about, oh, I heard this, or did you read this? Looking at uh, articles we post, uh, podcasts we have out there, it's all information that, again, don't believe me. All I want you to do is listen and say that there might be a different way, and then go do your own investigation, do your own work, um, and then once you have found that, hey, what Wade's telling me is working. It, you know, it's doing what it says it's going to do. Then now we have that rapport that that's built up. And I was taught a long time ago <clears throat> that education is a process, it's not an event, and it's a process over a lifetime. Quite frankly, it's a process over multiple generations. And a, again, the information that you need to know is already within you. So if you think about it as a garden that's overgrown with weeds, my job is to come out there and pull out all the weeds so you can see the fruits and vegetables that have been you know, that you've planted and that you've grown over the years. And so my job is to come and pull those weeds out so you can start to see those fruits of your labor. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think that, I think that's a great summary of kind of what it looks like. And you'd already kind of mentioned it, but I think qualifying yourself as somebody who wants to pursue this and be committed to it. Um, the first step is to check out your website and make sure that they're educated um, as, as to who you are and what you do. Correct. That's correct. We want to make sure that those that that work with us uh, have have um, similar alignment to to our beliefs and in, in, in our in our thought processes. And, and um, we'd ask that you, you you check out our website at sagewellstrategy.com or send me an email at uh, wade at sagewellstrategy.com. Awesome. Sounds good, Wade. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Thanks.